Hi guys, today I'm going to do a faux stone again. I'm going to go kind of a chippy choppy style um, and I'm going to be doing a pink dahlia turquoise and I've got my clay all ready so I've got a little tiny piece it's not I'm not using much clay you don't need a lot of clay but you can make this as big as you want so a smallish piece of translucent for the um, pool alcohol ink that I'm going to use by Ranger. I was going to use Cernit Turquoise but it was a bit too greeny for me. I wanted more of a bluey turquoise. So I've got two pieces of clay for the turquoise. I've got a little tiny block of translucent and three tiny squares of translucent for the orange that I'm using. This is Picasso Sunset but you can use any orange. This is all Cernit by the way. And then a chunk of Cernit to go with the violet bluish which is Cernit alcohol ink and then a chunk of Cernit to go with the um, pink Cernit alcohol ink. So they're the colours and that's the clay. That's all you're going to need and some copper leaf or gold leaf and some liquid clay, translucent liquid clay. Alright so the first thing I'm going to do, move those out of the way for a minute and I'm just going to colour each of these little squares with the orange and I need to do them different strengths of orange so let's go one, two, three boops of orange on this one one, two on this one and just one on that one and that's should that should be enough and that's just got to be left to dry just smear that in a little bit and that's got to be left to dry so I'm just going to put those out of the way for down the road clean my brush off a little bit and then this one is bigger pieces of um, translucent is for the blue so um, I'm going to add one, two, three on this one and one, two on the slightly smaller piece. It's not exact measurements guys, just an approximate amount but I've got a bigger piece, one bigger piece of trans and a smaller piece of trans for the blue. I'm just going to wipe my brush off before I do this. I'm just going to smear that around on there and let it dry. Same thing. And I'm just going to let that dry and then we'll come back to that. Alright, for the purple, I'm just going to chip straight up chippy choppy this. So, I've just got a smallish chunk, you don't need a great deal, like I said. I'm just going to chippy choppy that up. Oh, I did forget one thing that you're going to need, and that's some um, white pearl mica powder, which I'll grab in a second if I can find it, but that's for down the road anyway. So, but that is another thing that you will need. All right, chippy choppy up that little pile. And I'm going to bring that over there so I don't get this part of my tile dirty. And just put some chippy, uh, chippy choppy, some alcohol ink on that one. I didn't get my gloves ready, I'm all over the place as usual, so I'm just going to give it a quick toss with a brush like this. Make sure all, all the pieces are covered in the ink. Now I noticed with this um, kind of turquoise, the pink and purple are actually quite prominent, more so than the blue. So I have gone with a little bit more of the purple and the blue but you know you can do it whichever way you want to that's just based on what I've seen um, so that's why I'm going with a little bit more of the purple and a little bit more of the pink and I'm really not a pink p kind of person to be honest but it's a pretty stone so I thought I'd give it a try all right made a right inky mess there as usual So, I better wipe that up. <laughs> but that needs to be left to one side to dry. Better get another wipe, guys. Alright, 
So there's those pieces. And then of course the last little chunk of clay is the pink. And again it's slightly more clay than the other pieces. I think I might actually get a little bit more of the for the pink, just a little, little tiny more of the, the cernet for the pink, I think. Just a little bit more. And chop that up. And it's fine to leave some of the pieces chunkier. Some of these stones I've seen, they've got like just one great big chunk of blue. You know, a fell, fairly hefty chunk of blue or pink or whatever. So I'm not necessarily cutting them into small pieces, but I am going to move that over there so I don't get ink here again. And same thing. Just drizzle that pink. And this looks so bright, doesn't it? It's the only pink I've got. But once it's baked, it doesn't look as neon. So if you don't want to go with that particular pink, obviously you don't have to. You can um, try a different alcohol ink. It's all on what you prefer, really. But like I say, that's the only pink I've got, so that's what I've got to go with. But it's very close to the pink that I've seen in the stone, so it works out pretty well, even though it looks really vibrant at the moment. Same thing, I'm just going to coat all those pieces. And I'm going to leave all of this to one side to dry. And then once it's all dry, I'll be back. I've let all this dry then and I'm going to start with the um, large piece of turquoise. And this is going to get passed through the pasta machine until the colour is thoroughly mixed in. So I'm just going to pass that through. And I'll keep doing that until it's mixed in. I'm not going to do that on camera, but then this piece just only needs to be passed through a few times so the colour isn't thoroughly mixed in. So I'll do that one quickly. And that's as much as I want to mix that. I don't want it thoroughly mixed in, okay? This one needs to be thoroughly mixed. These three squares of the orange also need to be thoroughly mixed. And by the way, these little squares were rolled onto a number seven on my Atlas 150, zero being the thickest setting. So I'm going to go and continue to mix this so the colour's thoroughly mixed, and then I'm going to mix the colour into each of those squares until it's thoroughly mixed. All right, so I've mixed the oranges all into their own little squares still rolled out onto number seven i forgot to mention that you will need another strip of translucent and that is also rolled onto a number seven this is the tra uh, the blue completely mixed in and i'm just going to form that into a log like so doesn't have to be perfect it's all going to get chopped up and the same with the other blue that I didn't thoroughly mix together. That's also going to get rolled into a log and chopped up. So I'll just quickly do that. So roll those into logs. And chippy choppy. And you can leave some of these pieces quite chunky. I'm going to anyway. And then you can do a few smaller little chops as well. So that's that pile. We could always go back and chop down the road if we need to. And then this one. Again, I want to leave some fairly chunky pieces. that's that we can come back to that and then for the orange take the little little square of um, translucent the strip of translucent rolled onto a seven and the three orange squares they should all be slightly um, different in intensity of orange and all I'm going to do is 
just take little strips like this of each of the orange overlap it a little bit add a little bit of trans on there it's rough and ready guys and I'm just gonna start poking down into the stack but I need to make myself a little bit more room I'm getting crowded here push that over there okay and just cut down into the stack so that's pushing all that clay down into that base translucent block to give it a little bit of a fracture and that's all you keep doing is just taking some of those orange squares orange pieces stacking it up on top of the block grabbing another piece of trans getting rid of the excess you don't have to do a massive block as you can see I didn't use a lot of clay for this and just keep pushing through give it a little bit of a reshape once in a while a little bit more of the orange oops another piece of trans and another push down get rid of the tipsy hair and then the last little bits of orange we can just stack on top like this no rhyme or reason you just slapping the colour on okay and then the last bit of trans and push down again blunt side down guys by the way and you can do as many of those cuts as you want or as little but it's just to give it a little bit of fracture so I'm just going to form this into a thicker block like so and you can see that colour has been pushed down into the stack so we're going to put that to one side for a minute or two but that's ready to go okay so that's one element complete right let's get this blue and I accidentally mixed them all up didn't I so I want the, the not mixed in separate from the mixed in although that is going to get thrown together down the road but I, st I want them separate at this point in time I don't want any purple in it either so there's the not thoroughly mixed and this is the thoroughly mixed apart from those few little bits there alright so I'm going to get this and we're going to get a little bit messy again guys and actually I'm going to bring a piece of paper over to do this pop that on there and I noticed in this stone that um, the turquoise part had purple veining running through it. So I'm going to throw in some purple alcohol ink, the violet that I told you about. The same violet as this. And just douse that in that. So it will give us those purple lines running, th running around the turquoise. So obviously that needs to be left to dry again. I'm thinking whether I need to chop it a little bit more. But I'll decide that once it's dry. I'm just going to move that out of the way. Um, and I think that's all we can do at this point just got to wait for that to dry and I'll be back all right now these are um, dry I'm going to start adding the mica powder and I've got this white um, pearl mica powder by my spring um, so let's just recap then we've got the translucent doused in pink alcohol ink translucent doused in violet um, the turquoise blue 
then doused in the violet, my little chippy choppy blocky thing, and then the blue that's not thoroughly mixed in to translucent. And I'm just going to add a little bit of mica powder to each one, not a great deal, it's just to help separate those chunks. So, if I can get the bag open, it's a little bit awkward working from these bags, but it's all good. Alright, so I'm just going to lightly dust each of these in a little bit of the powder. Like I say, it's not really to give it any kind of shimmer, it's just to help separate those chunks. So I don't want a great deal of it. A little bit more on there and a little bit more on there and that should be good. Alright, so let's tumble all that together. We'll start with the pink. And you can break any pieces apart if they're too stuck together and then just coat them in that powder and that helps to separate the, the chunks. And I think I'm going to go back in and chop this a little bit. But I do want to maintain some chunkier pieces so I'm not going to cut it too much. And then just retumble like so. Put that to one side, bring over this one, coat that in this, and I'm thinking I might want to chop a little bit more into this as well, but not a great deal. Again, I want some chunkier pieces of the turquoise, so I think that will do. So there's that. The violet, one little chunk, uh, chunk, one little chop into this, but again, not a great deal. And then this one, and I think. I'm going to leave that as is. I'm not going to chop into that anymore. And now all we need to do is add the liquid clay, the translucent. I'm using Kato. You can use whichever you want to. Just a little drizzle on each pile. Like so. And then for the blue, I'm going to throw in some of this copper leaf going to try and get it on there without it sticking to me. Not working out too well, is it? Really? <laughs> oh dear. Right, so chuck some of that on there. You can use quite a lot. It wants some nice gold vein in through, running through that, or in this case, copper. But I have seen it with gold as well, so you could use gold leaf if you wanted to. Um... And I think that's what I'm going to do for that until we've... Mm. No, do you know what? I'm going to add some into the pink as well. Change my mind. It, it doesn't really matter where you put it, to be honest. It's just a little bit of extra vein in the, that the stone has. So I'm just plunking that on there, making a mess. And then, of course, we've just got to tumble all this together, but don't squeeze it into any kind of shape at this point. You just coat in each of those piles in the liquid clay, like that. Make sure it's thoroughly coated. And then just keep them to one side, separate from each other. I'm just going to clean my gloves off a bit. I'm getting all sticky. And then this one. Just get it all tossed together. And the same with the pink. So it is just pretty much a chippy choppy with a few little tweaks here and there. But this is one of those stones where I don't want to just throw the pile all together. I want to place them more strategically. Let me just clean up a little bit. And then we've got this block that we need to deal with as well. So I'm going to get that and take the side where you were putting your chops through and flip it on its side so it's facing towards you. And I'm just literally going to take 
random chunks from this like so so you can see that pattern in this and that's what I noticed with that um, this stone it's got some like the orange looked more fractured but again you could do that with any of any of these if you wanted to but I just decided to go with just the orange so I'm just giving it a quick chop and then of course we need the powder again just a little dusting of that give that a tumble maybe chop a little bit more I think I might have got too much of the orange I might not use all of this but we'll see I don't want it to overtake the overall piece another quick tumble a bit of liquid clay in that one and give that a tumble all right so there are all the um, components ready to go we just need to form it into a block so Pink is kind of the star of the show because that's why it's called Pink Dahlia Turquoise because it's got a lot of pink in it. But I'm just going to take one little chunk in the centre here and you can form this however you want to guys. This is just how I'm doing it. You can put any colours which way you want together. And next to that I'm just going to take a little bit of the orange like so. And then I'm going to put the turquoise covered in the violet up here. And then some of the translucent with the violet down here. And you just keep stacking it like this until you've got your piece. Let's throw in a bit of this not so mixed blue. And a little bit more of the pink here and a bit more orange like I say you can throw it together however you want to but I didn't want to throw it all together because these stones have got like almost separate compartments of colour rather than all mingled together let's add a little bit more of that there it's a bit sticky it's a bit messy but I think it's worth it I'm going to put some more of that pink there some of that blue there and then just the last little bit of purple and I don't uh, throw a little bit more orange in I guess but I'm not using all of the orange there's only a tiny bit left anyway so stack the colours where you want them to be and there is no particular order guys and it's extremely sticky and messy and then you've just got to form it into a block but I'm just going to clear this clear the decks a little bit and uh, give myself some more room wipe this mess up give my blade a clean dry this down all right so you've got this mush of color and you're just going to form it into a block and that's really all there is to it to be honest other than to make your shapes so just keep squashing and pressing and turning until you've got it into a nice condensed block And obviously as you cut through you're going to get slightly different um, proportions of colours etc. I just want to make sure it's really firmly closed back up. And I think... 
That's good. Okay. Wipe my gloves off a bit. Wipe this down a bit. So the only thing I don't like about Chippy Chop is how messy it is, but um, no, I'm not going to put it in a bag. I can't be bothered with faffing with bags. It's messy. I clean it up. I'm going to wipe this down. All right, so there's the block then. Let's slice into this. So I'm going to take a fairly thick piece because I want to make this into like a funky heart shape. I'm not even going to be using a cutter for this one. And the stone I saw was a funky heart shape and I kind of liked it. And I think that's what attracted me to it. Um, the shape of it as, as much as the um, colours and everything. So you're just going to get a fairly thick piece. You don't have to do this. You can just roll out and use cutters if you want to. But I'm just going to get this into a rough... Whoops. I'm going to take my gloves off, guys. They're irritating me. I'll get sticky fingers, but oh well. Alright, so I'm just going to get this block and I'm just going to push down in the centre like that. This is the start of the, the funky heart. And I'm just going to round those edges off. And I'm going to pinch it together at the bottom. Just to give it a very, very rough heart shape at this point. Obviously, I need to play with it flip it and make sure it looks good on the other side and just keep playing with it until you've got the heart shape that you want obviously this is going to get cleaned up as well because it's getting rather grubby looking on the surface all right so like i say it's a very rough and ready heart and i kind of like that look um but that's just me you don't have to do this just give it a little bit of a shape a little bit of a rounded edge and it's supposed to look organic like this it's not supposed to be a perfect neat little heart shape and I personally really like that so when you're happy with that I'm just going to wipe down again So when you're happy with your shape, I'm just going to round it off a little bit more here and there. Like I say, very rough and ready little heart. I'm just going to give this a quick clean off with isopropyl alcohol and a wipe. So you can see better what it's going to look like when it's baked. obviously you can decide which way you want to hang it because it's obviously reversible I'm just going to tidy this up here a little bit so there's that side I'm just going to lift it and grab a piece of paper turn it over and clean this side as well I'm just going to flatten this down a little bit there's a little bit here that looks a bit bumpy so I'm just going to smooth it with my blade And this is extra sticky. I've probably used way too much liquid clay in this. So just be mindful of that as well, guys. Um, if you don't want your pieces to be as sticky as this, don't use as much liquid clay as I did. Just a little drizzle. So I'm going to clean this off on this side. And just fiddle around with it for a bit longer like so and that's going to get baked and also I'm going to give it a sand on a 320 grit with wet dry sandpaper just to clean it up smooth it out a little bit actually I probably will sand and buff this through all the grits of sandpaper rather than putting resin on it yeah I think I will I'm going to sand and buff this one guys I'm just going to flip this over and I need to decide which side I like best actually I'm thinking probably this side I'm going to get clean paper because that's got grubby now and I think I'm good with that so that's going to get baked I'm going to bake it for an hour maybe even a little bit longer because it's quite thick 
but that's my little funky heart shape. And I know it takes a bit of faffing to get it right, but there you go. All right, so that's my funky heart shape. That's what it looks like pre-bake, but I am going to sand and buff. All right, let's uh, make a few more shapes then. I'm going to use my new custom-made cutters from Ojoy Creations. This is These will be listed in the Clay Boutique section of her website, and I'll leave a link in my, um, uh, in my Amazon in the description. Um, so these are my new custom made shapes I really like them I think I'm probably just going to go with these two though like I say these will be listed on Ojo Creations in the clay boutique section fairly thick piece again because I want them to look stone like and not too flat which side do I like the best this has got a little bit more pink in it so I'm going to go with that side I'm going to get my roller and just roll it out, but I don't want to roll it out too thin. Like I say, I like them quite chunky when they're stones. So I'm just going to gently do that. I'm not even going to measure it to see if it's equal. It's equal enough. Maybe just a tad more. Like so. All right, let's get some of these gorgeous colours in there. Where do I want this to go? Mm. Not getting much of that blue in though. Uh, <laughs> this is the problem. I think I'm going to go there. And like I said, I left this quite thick. But make sure your your um, cutter accommodates the thickness. You don't want it not to cut through all the way. Give it a little wobble. I find that this helps bevel the edges a little bit if you just kind of rock it from side to side, up and down, like so. Obviously, this could be used for something else. I'll probably stick that in a mould or something. I'll show you at the end anyway. This one's looking rather delightful. Just clean away that mess there. Tidy it up a little bit. Give it a quick wipe. And that's that one. I really like that shape actually. Whoops. Didn't mean to do that. Just gonna lift it up. I'm not going to worry about cleaning the back. I'm going to give it a good sand once it's baked. All right, so there's that one. Okay, so there's that one. I'm probably going to use a mold for these, for this leftover bit here. And let's just do one more pendant with the other shape, just because I want you to see it, I just dropped my rag. Oops. Just uh, so I'm going to cut that through, and there's still more left to make more pieces. I could do some earrings or whatever. Actually, that might not be big enough. I'm going to go with the bigger chunk of this. <clears throat> And I'm going to roll it again fairly thick. Like so. And because that was the end piece, I am going to give it a clean. Again, I'll get it more cleaned off once I've sanded it when it's out of the oven. I'm probably going to resin these other pieces, but I always I always give them a quick sand with a 320 no matter what. It just helps to smooth out any blemishes, um, make the edges smoother. And just so you know, guys, I don't resin my edges. People have asked me, I don't resin my edges. What I do is, this is, this is what I do. I bake them. I sand all over with a 320 grit just to get any really rough bits off, which usually there isn't that many because I'm 
very careful to burnish and smooth out before I bake. Then I'll resin front, resin back and then I'll go back and I'll sand through all the grits just on the edges and then give them a quick buff. I don't like sanding the edges, it's too messy for me anyway so I just find it easier to do that but I know a lot of people don't like sanding so that might not be an option for you but that's how I do it. Alright so I'm going to find a nice spot for this and I think I'm just going to go right there give it a wiggle like so and that's the other new shape okay there's that I'll just give it a quick clean I love this shape I'm just going to smush those edges a bit that's another thing with um, the chippy choppy sometimes the edges can come out a little bit rough so just go around you know like this or with your finger just to smooth them out a little bit and that's that one okay so I've got three pendants here I've still got all this left I will probably make some more pieces with it and um, I'll show you at the end so just one last wipe before they go in the oven but there they are guys they're the three pieces so there's the heart and my lovely new shapes all right guys I'm gonna go and bake these and I'll okay, be back guys I finished them this is um, one of the funky hearts that I did this isn't the one that I did on camera but I thought I'd show you anyway sanded and buffed I'll leave my tutorial on how I finish my pieces in the description so there's that one and this is the one that I did on camera and I absolutely love this one I think it's even better than this one to be honest um, you can see some really nice little fractures in that orange that we did or that I did and sanded and buffed all the way around I prefer this side to this side but it both sides look pretty nice but I just love how this one came out so there's that one that's my favorite so two funky hearts sanded and buffed and this is the other one that I did on camera I've not finished this one yet I've just got to resin the back and sand the edges a little bit but there's that one and I'm thinking I might need to re-resin this because there's quite a few air bubbles in that but that's what that looks like I prefer the sanded and buffed if I'm honest and here's the other little one that I did some pretty nice fracturing on this one as well so there's that one and this is another piece that I did and I really like this one too um, that one's been resined I haven't done the back yet so I'm not going to show you but there's that piece not decided how I'm going to dress them yet but there they are guys but this is my absolute favorite I love it and it's even got some little divots in it which I kind of like can you see those little divots that's fine it feel it really does feel like stone I love it all right guys that's all for today Thank you for watching and I'll catch you later. Bye.